Okay. Um, can you take us back to when you made the discovery of the mechanism in terms of what the state of knowledge was at the time and what led you to uh, discovering this mechanism and also what the response was at that time? Okay. Um, well, state of, state, of, state of knowledge, but it's, also, it's, it's more than just a state of knowledge, it's a, it's a state of concerning the state of, of, uh, of, of beliefs and different beliefs about how the theory should be done. Uh, I, I mean, the time was the early, early 60s, and it was a time when the successes of quantum electrodynamics were way in the past, and uh, the techniques of of uh, quantum field theory, which had been spectacularly successful in quantum electrodynamics, seemed not to be working anywhere else. And uh, <coughs> there had also been uh, uh, indications that, there was, there was, that, that, the, that even quantum electrodynamics were, was uh, was it ultimately a sick theory and couldn't couldn't be the whole story. That, I mean, work, this was the work of the Russian theorist Landau. So a lot of people gave up on this way of doing things and uh, concentrated on what was called S matrix theory, which was getting the most out of rather general principles without committing yourself to a very detailed theoretical model. So at the time that I started this work. Um, it, it was a rather unfashionable thing to be interested in, it, it, certainly this side of the Atlantic. Uh, the dominant uh, interest was in using S-matrix theory. Uh, and across the Atlantic uh, in the United States, uh, of the, the West Coast was, was broadly S-matrix theorists. Um, the East Coast contained uh, pockets of, of the old culture uh, the, with the influence of Julian Schwinger at Harvard, whose uh, pupil uh, Shelley Glashow is one of the authors of the successful uh, electroweak model. Um, but w w when I did the, the uh, Sick work, which was t turned out to be successful, my, my, my colleagues thought I was a bit of an idiot. <laughs> um, I got interested in it because uh, I'd been puzzled about symmetries in particle physics. Uh, I mean, they were puzzling enough if they were good symmetries, but they weren't even good symmetries. They were they were they were very broken symmetries, and I got interested in the work of Nambu. Uh, Japanese born American theorist when he appeared in uh, 19, uh, sorry, 1960, 61. Uh, and I got interested in trying to, to uh, avoid a difficulty which his type of theory, which was based on an analogy with the successful theory of superconductivity, uh, there was a difficulty which seemed to prevent it from being actually useful, and that difficulty was the existence, the prediction of, of zero mass spinless particles, which if they, certainly if they occurred in the context of uh, strong inter interaction physics would, would uh, result in stars radiating at a tremendous rate uh, in a way on top of, you know, extra to electromagnetic radiation. So it, it essentially uh, a useful difficulty, and it was that uh, difficulty which I, I saw how to evade in the very first short paper which which I wrote, and the way the the way that I saw of evading it was to write down the very simplest model theory, which shows it happening, which is what became known as as the Higgs model. And um, I mean that that was w within a week or so. Uh, and um, the the uh, well, maybe I shouldn't be telling this story uh, in Geneva. But the, the story is that the first paper, which was a sort of negative thing, said, saying that, you know, the, that these 
proofs that there's a difficulty uh, are not, uh, not university, university valid. That was accepted by the editor of, of Physics Letters, uh, who was based on CERN. Uh, the second one, which, uh, which I thought was a more important bit of work showing how it actually works, is what's became, what became known as the Higgs mechanism, was re rejected. Um, by the same editor? Hmm? By the same editor? By the same editor, yes. I, I, I was sharing an office with a colleague who, who was a, uh, an S matrix theorist who, who went off to CERN just after I, I, I did the work for, for the summer. And he came back and said, well, they, they didn't, at certainly, at CERN, they, they didn't see, see that what you were talking about had much to do with particle physics. <laughs> um, and so I, I then added on some additional paragraphs uh, uh, and sent it off across the Atlantic to the revised version of physical review letters who accepted it, and the referee I discovered uh, later was Namu. Uh, I mean, they, they have people who, who spoke the language, same language as me. Uh, but the, the mention of what became known as the Higgs boson was part of the extra which was added on because I, I thought if they don't understand what, what this is, what relevance this has to particle physics, I, I better mention a few consequences and I mentioned the existence of in, in theories of this type of what I call left, leftover massive spinless particles, at least one in, in any such theory, uh, as, a, as a sort of indication of an experimental signature. And that was what was then labeled a Higgs boson. I see. So the Higgs boson was not mentioned in the paper that you sent out to CERN? The one which went to CERN didn't mention that, but uh, I didn't send the second version to it to CERN because I thought...